Greetings and salutations to you folks out there doing something that I haven't done in a very, very long time. We're going to do a learning cast. Nugget sent me this replay and he is asking for help in what to do because uh, he lost this game and he needs to know how to fix it. Well, we're going to go ahead and watch this from his point of view, maybe give him a little bit of help on his build order and other things, and see how this game progresses. Hopefully we can all learn something about how the game works, and maybe a better way to take on an opponent. So, he is Cybrin, and he is an 846 rank versus Thor Gaming, who is 1059 and a UEF. Not too terribly large of a rank disadvantage, but it is a disadvantage nonetheless. First thing that I notice is that uh, there's a pretty drastic underbuild of power going on here before that air factory. We've only got three power generators and then two more for a total of five. And yes, there is an early hydro available, but you need at minimum six before you build that air factory. It is not smart to try to go air on fewer than six, and a lot of people build seven unless you can get your hydro online immediately. So I foresee a vicious power stall in Nugget's future. The only other thing that I'll say about the start is that as a Cybern versus a UEF, you have got to play this aggressively, very hard and fast. Um, if you let the UEF get you on your back foot you are done for you have to use the mantis speed to get around and skirt the enemy and do as much damage as you can to the outside corners in the early part of the game so that you have a leg up in the mid to late game when uef starts getting really strong so with that being said we're just going to kind of hang out here for a minute and see what goes on we've got uh, 120 total power income here and having to walk to reclaim some of this stuff to get the air factory online with that reclaim the hydro is actually getting close you're gonna see how much of a power dip there is just barely breaking even building that air factory and then i'm sure that it will go negative as soon as that thing cuts on so we've got a land scout over here that is covering the right side of the map making sure that nothing nasty slips around towards the back end and then we've got a mantis pushing Pushing, I'm not sure where. Probably to the back somewhere. See where he's headed here. Right back that away. So he is going to sit and chill in the rear. And, ah, here's some aggression on this side. We have a scout here. Snoop picked up on that engineer, and I bet that's a tank right there. I uh, did not actually catch it in the vision radius, but judging by the speed, yes, that is a tank. Well, proved me wrong. Nugget actually has a good air build there. That was an excellent start. I did not expect the Hydro to come online that quickly. So the Hydro saved it. We have plenty of power to keep that air factory going. And that is a win right there. And we've actually got too much mass in the bank at the moment. Need more land factories. If you will watch the 1600 plus players when they're playing on this map, at this point in the game, they've already got like nine or ten land factories queued up to one side or the other. And here they are coming. Very nice. You got to get that spam online because there's a lot of mass available on this map. We've got answering air from the enemy. There's a scout. So more than likely there's going to be a bomber at some point. We've got a bomber out here for Nugget. Maybe that can catch some things go off and kill a couple of expansioneers would be the best possible use of that and mantis creeping back towards the rear of the map that is going to be a very handy unit back there if they can keep those three mass extractors denied at least for a little while that will go a long ways towards damaging thor gaming's eco that was a dead mantis that means there's a striker right around here somewhere that engineer is about to be dead, I would think. Bomber heading towards the back. Whoopsie. <laughs> I flicked my mouse too far over to the right and snagged my other screen. I do apologize, people. Bomber going to head back here. And there is the tank swinging to the right gonna miss on that pass but maybe he can come around engineer is actually behind the rock outcropping there so very nice oh that's gonna hurt three engineers down 
and an interceptor locked on this one. Here comes this bomber, hopefully. Yes, it will kill that tank. Pesky little tank there. And another tank on this side, just killing off all those engineers. My observation at this point in the game is that there are not nearly enough combat units out and about for Nugget. Nugget, you got to build your Mantis and you've got to project with them. You can see we've got a tank over here. We had a couple, we had a tank over here. We now have an entire squad over on the right side pushing up to deny your expansion. And he's already traversed half the map here. And you haven't even got enough tanks to answer that. So got to get a move on with that production. And it looks like uh, there's some power being built. There hasn't really been any power made since that air factory went online. So we're seeing a hard power stall here at the moment. That is definitely not something that you want to do ever. Power stall is your greatest enemy. All right, mess in the back is cleaned up. We've got a little expansion here happily filling in those mass extractors. And look at back here. This Mantis made himself useful. He's got one kill. He's going to zap out that engineer and camp out on the base. Nicely done back there. Got more factories coming online. Here comes the mass stall. Oh, still not balanced on power. I'm trying to build more factories. It would probably be in your best interest to try to secure another one of these hydros. That would be the most efficient way to tackle your mass problem. But there it is. Fun fact, the factories actually cost more to build power wise than the tanks that they produce so if you're in a minor minor power stall and you're building factories whenever you stop building factories you will most likely stop power stalling so very handy little uh, tidbit there if you overbuild power while you're building your factories you will be way overbuilt on power by the time your production comes online Got a few Mantis pushing down here. I'm going to go ahead and bump the speed up just a hair on this. The early build, the very early build, was pretty dang good. I like the fact that you could get the air online, still have a small amount of excess power. Just somewhere in this build, you need to work in um, having a lot more early combat units. I know it's hard to pull off, especially on a map like this. There is so much wide open space to control. Ah, this is beautiful indeed. The Cybran run by. Here comes a T1 bomber trying to lay down some hurt on these engineers. Barely ticking one. And all of those mass extractors are going to go down. Run away, Mantis. Live to raid another day. We're just going to head down south. Put a little bit of damage on these and hopefully live to inflict some more wounds. And here in the back, we've got this expansion going down. There are still some combat units back there hitting that land factory. And this Mantis is still standing strong. The northern expansion here is going down yet again. The biggest problem here is that we're not filling in all these mass extractors fast enough. There's a few engineers out in the field, a handful really, but not enough to be reclaiming everything that needs reclaimed and rebuilding what needs rebuilt fast enough. You can see here, 47 mass per tick to 33, and that is after a bit of a raid here. Every time that you're poking and prodding, this guy immediately has engineers on the scenes rebuilding everything. So his downtime is very, very tiny on these mass extractors. Whereas these up here have been sitting empty for a while. So basically the raid denial needs a little bit of work and the recovery needs quite a bit of work. Looks like going for the T2 upgrade. The gun upgrade pairs well with Cybern units, but to each his own. One other thing, if you'll notice here, we got a point defense going down right here in this expansion. A point defense usually pays for itself in one of these side expansions here. 
Now, yes, you can kill it off with a couple of T1 Arty, and here's the poking and prodding that we're, we all love so much. Attack on this side, draw all the units to the left, and then ram units up the right side. And those are going to carry their merry way all the way up into the base here. That is not a good thing at all. Whenever you attack to one side, you've got to worry about where the other units are. T1 radar would also pay for itself mightily in this kind of situation because you've got lots and lots of little finicky troop movements in this area. So if you had built, if I had a T1 engineer built a radar here or something, I know there was one here that got killed, but um, T1 radar is definitely a good thing to keep online. Or air scouts, either way. We got T2 going on in the back here. We got two T2 mass extractors. And the mass count is still slipping, 27 to 63. And this is approaching the end of the game, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Observer here because I can't see Nugget doing much else about it here. Ah, we do have four T2 mass extractors, but that's mostly because we have huge map control and a lot of reclaim going into Thor's pocket. We got 1500 reclaim versus 16. Not as much as I thought. Thor Gaming didn't do as much reclaim as I thought he would have. But anyway, oh, Triad Creep. Ouchie wawas, that is nasty. We got T2 online here, but uh, building T2 engineers, and I don't think it's going to be enough. One thing I will notice here, building T2 power is a fairly significant investment. And up till this exact point in the game, when all of this started going down, you actually had excess power. So I would not be worried so much about getting T2 power online as I would building combat units because overbuilding power means less tanks. There's the control K. Nugget is going to take the wind handily overrunning this base with T1 spam. Okay, couple of quick observations in the end game and hopefully this will help you out on where you stand on this. Thor Gaming did not take a T2 upgrade. You can see he's got two T... No, a couple more than that. He's got three T2 units out, which is basically nothing. He just got this factory, whereas this factory has been up for a while. If you do not need T2 and you don't have the eco for T2, don't get T2 is the end of the story here. Because by getting the T2 factory, you gave up production your already low T1 spam count dropped even lower, allowing Thor Gaming to just absolutely bowl over this side of the map because there was no unit support over here. And pretty much ended the game there. And I know that there's a rank difference here, but this is kind of the learning aspect of it. You've just got to work out. There's a lot of manual reclaim right here that you can get early on. You can see we've still got rocks that have not been reclaimed. Peep, what I see on this map, and I am no expert, but I'm offering what knowledge that I have from watching other people play this map because I hate this map um, <laughs> for this exact reason. This is what my base looks like at the end of me playing it. I never have the APM to carry out what I know. Um, if you get the manual reclaim and you build a handful of power generators in the back and you immediately rush for this hydro, you can reclaim and hydro yourself to four or five very early land factories and start producing combat units almost immediately. And then there's manual reclaim, there's a rock patch here, there's rock patches around the edges. You basically, there's some more right there. Your expansion engineers, if you can take a few seconds to just nab some of these rocks as you're going by to build these mass extractors, um, if you can get these larger plots of rocks, and all you got to do is just, um, I don't know if I can do it here. Where's an engineer? There's an engineer. Um, I cannot. I don't have a command menu. Um, if you press the reclaim command down here, it will preset your cursor as a reclaim command and you can just hold down shift 
and just rapid fire click over these groups. Doesn't matter if you hit every rock, doesn't matter if you only hit half of them, as long as you're hitting some of them as you go by, it will greatly, greatly help your early game. So hopefully that is something that will help you out. Um, basically, more units, more units, more units, and if you're already in a tight spot with units threatening your base, don't drop a T2 upgrade because the T1 unit spam will always be better than the one or two T2 point defense that you can get online with the little bit of mass you have left over after that expensive upgrade and building your engineers and all that crap. So hopefully somebody got something out of this and maybe next time around you will have a better chance on the open palms. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this cast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I am going to stop this here and jump over to an epic face palm. I got a... Uh, fail-tastic Gap of Rohan game that I'm going to cast doing a double today. So join me over there and I will see you in the next cast. Thanks for watching.